live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. There are certain moments in NFL history where you look at a box score or a stat line, and you have no idea how the heck that happened. It would never even cross your mind that something like that could occur based on what you looked at. But sure enough, it did. For example, how did the Houston Texans, with three first downs and 47 total yards of offense, beat the Pittsburgh Steelers 24-6 in 2002? You can check that out in the upper right corner, but how did the Philadelphia Eagles score 24 points in the first half against the Dallas Cowboys in 1966 with one first down? And speaking of the Eagles, how on earth did Mike Barella make the Pro Bowl? This is something that has puzzled many NFL fans for years. In 1975, Mike Barella was not good. His numbers were awful. He wasn't even a starting quarterback. And yet, somehow, he was named to the Pro Bowl. There are plenty of good quarterbacks in NFL history to never make it to the All-Star Game, including Joe Flacco, Doug Williams, Chad Pennington, and Aaron Brooks. And yet, Mike Barella, of all people, made it. How did this happen? Well, we're going to take a deep dive into what has to be the strangest Pro Bowl season of all time. This is the story of Mike Barella, the worst Pro Bowler in NFL history. Our story begins in 1974, when the Cincinnati Bengals selected Barella in the fourth round of the NFL Draft. Barella was a pretty solid quarterback coming out of Stanford. He led the pack in completions and passing touchdowns in each of his final two seasons with the Cardinal, and actually finished fourth in the entire NCAA in touchdown passes during that 1973 season. However, he would not be on the Bengals for long. His time in Cincinnati lasted a grand total of two months, because shortly after, he was traded to the Eagles. You see, Barella's services weren't exactly necessary in Cincinnati. Ken Anderson was the starter, and he was coming off of a pretty solid 1973 campaign where he finished fifth in the league in passing touchdowns. If you want to see a video I made about Anderson, who absolutely should be in the Hall of Fame, then click the card in the upper right corner. The Bengals had just traded for Chargers backup quarterback Wayne Clark, and he was going to be the backup. Why the Bengals wanted Clark as the main man behind Anderson, seeing as in his three seasons with the Chargers, Clark threw no touchdowns and 11 picks, I don't know. But there didn't seem to be any roster space for Barella, and maybe he wasn't worth the money. With Barella unhappy, with Barella having leverage with the New York Stars of the World Football League, and the Bengals looking to get rid of him, the Eagles came calling and made a trade. What made absolutely no sense is what the Eagles gave up to acquire him. Cincinnati got multiple picks for Barella. When Mike Brown asked whether or not he got a third pick in the trade, Brown smiled and said, possibly. Why did he smile? Because it wasn't a third round pick. It was a first round pick. Instead of the Eagles just drafting Barella in either of the first three rounds of the draft, they decided to trade a 1976 first round pick to get it. Just an absolutely baffling trade, but that's besides the point. In Barella's first season, he primarily rode the bench behind Roman Gabriel, and the Eagles were doing great under Gabriel to start things off. In Philly's first five games, they were 4-1, and one, and following a 35-7 demolition against the New York Giants in Week 5, they were looking like one of the best teams in football. They were second in the NFC East behind the 5-0 St. Louis Cardinals, and had allowed just 41 points, which was the best defense in the league. Unfortunately, things went into a tailspin after that. Six weeks later, the Eagles were sitting at an abysmal 4-7, with their season completely getting away from them. The very talented Roman Gabriel, who was a Pro Bowl quarterback in 1973, just didn't have it by this point in 74, as he fell off of a cliff. The offense was sputtering. 10 points against the Saints in Week 7, a shutout loss to the Steelers in Week 9, and just 3 points against the Cardinals in Week 10. And after just 7 points against Washington in a 26-7 loss in Week 11, Gabriel got yanked. His final stat line on the season was just 9 touchdowns and 12 interceptions on a career-worst 5.5 yards per pass attempt and 9.7 yards per completion. Head coach Mike McCormack decides to give Barella a shot over the final three weeks. And sure enough, Barella delivered. In his first game against the Packers, the Eagles snapped their six-game skid, and Barella threw two touchdown passes in a 36-14 victory. Barella said that he was nervous, but before the game, a bunch of his teammates came up to him and told him to relax. Barella, who wasn't expecting to play in 1974, let alone start, was their guy the rest of the way. He followed it up with a 20-7 victory against the Giants, where he threw for 240 yards, one touchdown, no picks, and had a 97.7 passer rating, and closed the season with a 28-17 victory against the Lions, 
where he threw two touchdowns. Morello looked legit and gave the Eagles some optimism going into 1975 that he was going to be their guy going forward. That didn't happen. To start off the 1975 season, Morello was named the starting quarterback. He did not fare well. In fact, he fared so poorly that he wound up losing his starting job after just one week. While things started off all right, as Morello hit Charlie Young on a 13-yard touchdown pass to give the Eagles a lead in the first half, he did nothing after that. Morello threw two picks and took three sacks. A lot of his numbers were dump-offs more than anything. Eventually, Morello got benched and was replaced by Roman Gabriel. While Gabriel played well, going 9 for 13 with a touchdown pass off the bench, it wasn't enough, as the Eagles lost their opening game to the Giants 23-14. However, it was enough to give Gabriel the starting job for the next few weeks. While Barella got to play in a few games off the bench, he didn't do anything special, and in one game against the Rams, threw two picks while completing just 46% of his passes. However, Barella would find a way to get his job back. Much like the 1974 season, the Eagles were not very good in 1975, and went on a slump midway through the year, dropping five straight games to fall to 1-7. And, and a 27-17 loss to Dallas in Week 10 was the last straw. In that game, Gabriel threw no touchdowns and two picks, while posting a passer rating of 29.8. For some perspective, if you did nothing but spike the ball to the ground on every single play, you would have a higher passer rating than that. Barella came off the bench in that game and was able to get the starting job for the final four weeks of the season. Over those final four weeks, the Eagles went 2-2. Two and two. On one hand, Barella played really well in his first start during that stretch, which came against the 49ers, as he threw for 241 yards and three touchdowns in a 27-17 victory. On the other hand, he followed that up next week against the Bengals in a 31-0 loss by going 6-for-18 with 53 yards, no touchdowns, three interceptions, and a 2.8 passer rating. And then the following week against the Broncos, in a losing effort, he completed less than 48% of his passes while throwing three picks and posting a 35.2 passer rating. When the season ended, Morella's final numbers were 996 yards, six touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. This means that Barella finished the season 30th in passing yards in a league with 26 teams, tied for 23rd in passing touchdowns, and 26th in passer rating amongst all qualified quarterbacks. Barella was not good by any measure whatsoever. And most years, that's where our story ends. Try again next year. Except somehow, with those numbers, Barella made it to the Pro Bowl. You might be asking yourself this. How did Morella even make it with those numbers? Well, a lot of people dropped out. Jim Hart got the start, but they needed another quarterback. Shaq Harris had a sore arm, so he couldn't go. Archie Manning was hurt with a sore arm, so he couldn't go. Steve Barkowski was hurt with a sore arm, so he couldn't go. Franz Harkinson was hurt with a sore arm, so he couldn't go. Billy Kilmer, who threw 23 touchdowns that year, was hurt, so he couldn't go. And Roger Staubach didn't want to play after playing in the Super Bowl the week before and had sore ribs so he couldn't go. That still raises the question. Even with all those guys dropping out, why was Barella named a Pro Bowler? Yes, your options were not very good, but you still could have gone with a guy that started more than five games, like Craig Morton or Joe Reed or someone like that. And Barella himself was not expecting to make it. He was going to law school at NYU during the offseason, and had purchased his books and got his schedule, and then was informed by general manager Jim Murray that somehow he made the Pro Bowl. This meant that Barella had to drop out of law school. Barella normally likes throwing three weeks beforehand to get ready, but he hadn't thrown a football for three weeks because he thought his year was done. After the season ended, the first time he threw a football was the Tuesday before the game. Barella understood why other quarterbacks didn't want to play in the game since everyone was injured, but as Barella said, I didn't care. Barella didn't see the field for the first three quarters, and the NFC was down 20-9. That's when his Eagle teammate, Charles Young, told Barella to tell the coaching staff to put him in the game. Barella didn't want to cause any controversy, saying, this is my second year. I'm really just happy to be here. Barella knew he didn't belong, and he didn't want to force coach Chuck Knox to put him in the game. But Young spoke to Knox, and after that conversation, Barella was going in. The man who threw six touchdowns and 12 picks and started five games was now going up against the best players in the AFC. How did Barella perform? Well, he played out of his mind. He threw a touchdown pass to Terry Metcalf to cut the deficit to 20-16, to on a play he dubbed the Barella Special, where he faked a run and a reverse before throwing the ball. Knox had Barella install that play in the playbook during practice. And then he threw a touchdown pass to a different member of the Cardinals, 
finding Mel Gray for the game-winning score. Varela led the NFC from down 20-9 to up 23-20, and the NFC won it by that score. Varela wasn't named the MVP of the game for his performance, as it went to Billy White Shoes Johnson, who had a 90-yard punt return touchdown. However, back then, the MVP voting closed five minutes before the game ended, and by that point, Varela hadn't even stepped onto the field. Howard Cosell spoke to Varela after the game and said that Varela was the real MVP. What happened afterwards? Well, Varela did next to nothing for the rest of his career. The following year, he threw nine touchdowns and 14 picks with the Eagles, and then played two seasons in Tampa Bay before never playing another down after the 1978 season. But he'll always have this moment. This would have been the equivalent of Mike Lennon making the Pro Bowl this year. It's something absolutely bizarre that I don't think will ever happen again. A backup quarterback not only made the Pro Bowl unexpectedly, but played some of the best football of his career there. There have been some bad Pro Bowlers in NFL history, but Mike Barella might take the cake for the best of the worst. Be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at jerogator 9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.